Aloha everyone, my name is Dane DuPont and this is the beginning of the 2018 Kilauea eruption. So this video is going to cover May 3rd, 2018, the day that lava first came out of the ground Leilani Estates. But we're going to also go back. We're going to start off by looking at some of the eruption sequence, the chain of events that led up into lava coming out of the ground in a residential area. So there's a lot that could be said about the eruption sequence. There's all kinds of details and nuance in it. But we're going to just summarize it here. We're going to consolidate. We're going to shoehorn. But hopefully give you that necessary context going into day one. Let you know a little bit what people were thinking about on the ground. What kind of information was out there. How it was being distributed. And then we're just going to go from there into the first day of the eruption. And look at what happened on Mahala Street in Leilani Estates on May 3rd. All right, without further delay, let's get right into it. We start off in mid-April at Puo'o the 35-year-old crater that's been erupting since 1983, and it's overflowing from a perched pond. Transitioning up to the Kilauea summit at Haleumaumau, it's also overflowing in late April. The system is primed and ready, and that really is the main thing to know about the pre-eruption sequence. It's so primed that USGS HVO put out a notification that they thought something was going to happen. They didn't know what, but then on April 30th, Huo'o rapidly drained all the magma within the crater away, disappearing underground. On May 2nd, Fisher Zero appears very close to Puo. It's short-lived, but during that time, cracks start to emerge in the streets of Leilani Estates, and these cracks continuously grow day by day. Now this is Malika Lincoln. She's a reporter that did a great job in 2018, and she's reporting on the cracks in Leilani Estates that have been forming. But what she's doing here is relaying kind of the county's interpretation. This was one of the reports that I caught being on the mainland leading up into the eruption on May 3rd. Hawaii County fire officials, this is a non-emergency situation. There is no steam, there is no heat radiating from this area. In fact, we are told that thermal imaging cameras were also brought in and they have detected no activity. However, now she's reporting what she's being told here. And meanwhile, members of the community, Neighborhood Watch, Kaika Marzo, and a bunch of other guys, they begin documenting the cracks that are appearing in Leilani Estates and mapping them out. And as time progresses, more cracks emerge, the cracks that are already there start to widen. It's starting to look like a pattern here too. You can start to see a little bit of a line forming. And then on May 3rd, I get a phone call and a bunch of text messages that say, you gotta get on a Kaika Marzo's live stream right now. And when I get on it, this is what I see. This was the famous broadcast, the announcement to the community and the world we that have we have an we eruption. Have an eruption. Um, just letting everybody know, we have an one eruption right now. Um, eruption in Leilani. No joke. Um, lava is coming out right now. So I, I, I just letting everybody know, Laura, Laura Leilani, check this out. Eruption is happening right now. No joke. It was a hell of a way to get the news broken to you that there's a volcano in your neighborhood. Grab Kai. Okay, everybody. Eruption is happening in Lelani right now. No joke. It's happening right here. So one thing we haven't talked about yet is earthquakes. For about a week before the 2018 eruption, there was an increase in earthquake activity in the Lower East Rift Zone and in Leilani Estates. Now this was raising the awareness level that something might be happening and these earthquakes increased in frequency as time progressed, being every couple hours to every hour or so. And then once Puo dropped, the earthquakes increased again to be in every 10 minutes or so, according to some reports. But what awareness there was didn't really help with the stress once the lava did come to the surface. Two population rushes happened in the hours immediately after lava surfaced. The first was of the people that lived in Leilani Estates closest to the eruption trying to evacuate the area. It wasn't known exactly how this one fissure would develop and what came next. So there was a general anxiety and a need to get out of there and get what evacuation done, done immediately. The second was the population that lived in Leilani Estates, owned land in Leilani Estates, that weren't in Leilani Estates at the time of the eruption. Now, while people were trying to get out of Leilani that were there, People that weren't in Leilani, maybe they were in Hilo or somewhere else nearby, rushed to get back to Leilani. Now, the eruption of Fisher One wasn't an overly spectacular event. It was more of a sign of things to come. 
these fissure eruptions, they happen in multiple fissures over the course of months. Fissure 1 in and of itself produced small fountains, not much of a lava flow to be spoke of, and ended only after two hours or so. The lava that came out of Fissure 1 would later be identified to be leftover magma stored in the rift zone from 1955. And this was the lava that would be pushed through the system over the course of the first few days in 2018. So this footage represents some of the last of Lower Leilani Estates almost entirely intact. There is only one small fissure cutting across one road, no houses claimed, and most of the area is still green. It still looks like Leilani Estates did prior to the eruption, minus that one little strip. That will change over the coming days and weeks. By the end of the eruption, this area will com be completely buried and have no resemblance to what it looks like in this video. So about an hour after the eruption starts, I get a call from my mom, who is at the scene of the eruption. She had gone out to her place on Kalpili and walked over one street to the eruption site. And I remember her telling me, oh, it doesn't look that bad. I thought it was going to be worse. And 24 hours later, everything had changed. But at that point in time, it wasn't that bad. Now, the reactions to the eruption by those living closest to it within Leilani Estates and neighboring communities was interesting of itself. So on one hand, you had people like my mom saying, oh, this isn't that bad, to others saying, I'm not leaving unless the lava's on my doorstep, to on the other end of the spectrum, people saying, we got to get out of Dodge right now, throwing what they could in the car and hightailing it out of there. And even some saying, I'm not uh, happy with just getting out of Pahoa or even out of Hilo, I want off of this side of the island. So they went all the way to Kona. And it's just uh, interesting how the reactions varied. One last thing I haven't mentioned about Fisher One was the sound and the smell. So when Fisher One came to the surface, it did so with the sound of a jet engine right inside the, the neighborhood. Got a lot of people's attention really quickly, but also the smell that accompanied it. It did sound like a previous uh, release from the Puna Geothermal Power Plant, but the smell was the tip-off. smelled like burnt matches, really. And that was the signal that there's SO2, which, uh, which signifies that there's lava. That'll do it for day one of the eruption. By this point, Fisher One has ceased erupting, and the people of Leilani Estates settle in for a long and stressful night. Within 24 hours, five additional fissures will open up in the residential neighborhood, including one that opens under my family's property, beneath a home that my dad had built himself. So that'll be in the next one, and it'll be a dramatic escalation from May 3rd. Hope to see you there. Aloha.